the Center for Creative Leadership here in Singapore uh, around APAC and around the world indeed has put a lot of time and, and, and effort into reimagining what work 3.0 and leadership within that framework is going to look like. They've done a report on it and some research and joining us to discuss it now is Elisa Malice, the MD and Vice President uh, APAC for the Center for Creative Leadership. Elisa, great to have you with us today. What a world we're living in now. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Glenn. It's uh, it, it really is a very big shift. Yeah. So the report actually um, includes 13 countries in the region. Okay. Uh, most of Southeast Asia, China, India, and Australia. And this week, we're going to be releasing a deeper dive on Singapore along with the American Chamber and LinkedIn. Um, you know, work 1.0 pre-pandemic, most of us were in the office most of the time. Yeah. Work 2.0, remote uh, for a very extended period of time. And work 3.0, we've entered and are trying to adapt to now. And what's interesting is it's a new plane. Uh, we are approaching it, though, and many leaders are approaching it, uh, as trying to take a bit of 1.0 and 2.0. You know, I'm in the office some days, mm. I'm at home some days. But what we're seeing is that it, it is much more than that and it is requiring a much higher level of adaptation uh, in this new sort of 3.0 plane. People are underestimating, in other words, what it's going to take. Right. And what we're seeing is it requires more than just taking a bit of this and a bit of that. It is really about reimagining workplaces, reimagining leadership. It's a really tall order. Can we just, for the benefit of our listeners, just give a broad overview of what that actually is? What does Work 3.0 look like? Yeah, so I mean, I think two things are very clear to all of us. There's no going back and there's no silver bullet at this stage. Mm. And, you know, we've seen that in the current Work 3.0 reality, the uh, hybrid work models in APAC nearly doubled. That's no surprise. So 40% mm. pre-pandemic. So there was some what we call hybrid working pre-pandemic, uh, but it's really 80% now. So what we think about, we think about what matters in all of this to define what is work 3.0. And of course, it's employee preferences. A lot has been driven by that. What are people asking for? But it's also productivity, engagement, and well-being. Hmm. And so work 3.0 is about how do we get high levels of productivity, engagement, and well-being? And what is what does the new recipe look like for that? Uh, so what's interesting in the data is that we see a lot of conflicting data right now. Uh, so let's just take um, well-being, for example. There is greater employee happiness and wellness uh, in this Asia study named as one of the top three benefits. Uh, however, 46% felt that the isolated work style has had a negative impact on their social well-being. Oh, that's interesting. And not surprising, I might say, right? You know, uh, some people really have, it's, it's been hard to communicate, to socialize, to be with your coworkers, right? So that, that's had a negative emotional impact, I would say, right? Negative emotional impact on people, wearing away the cohesion within teams mm. that are the fundamental unit of what drives organizations forward. Productivity, if we also look at that, a very twofold effect, a very mixed picture. While the hybrid model is considerably lifting productivity and engagement, it's doing that for top performers. So what you'll see in the study is that the bottom performers are re very adversely impacted. Mm. And, you know, even uh, in the U.S., we heard Salesforce CEO uh, 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 Mark men mentioning recently in a Slack message that new hires during the pandemic were facing lower productivity. So the productivity picture is also uh, not very clear overall. Well, that is the, the stereotype, isn't it, that if you have a hybrid model, half at the office, half at home, say, then the productivity will inevitably drop because you're distracted at home. You might have family concerns, all kinds of possible distractions. Netflix might suddenly start appealing and so on. So yeah. is, is, does that stereotype hold up? Is productivity really affected with this work 3.0 hybrid model? It is, I think, and um, it's far more complex than half the people at home and half the mm, people, of depending on the industry. Uh, many times, yesterday I was in a meeting. Many of us were in the office, but two people weren't, so we were all virtual. Then suddenly we ran out into one of the meeting rooms because all of us were there. Uh, so I think that what we have are these parameters that were a little bit clearer before, 
uh, have become blurred. Mm, we're talking uh, with Elisa Malas, the MD and Vice President of APAC for the Center for Creative Leadership on their new research that's come out around Work 3.0, Reimagining Leadership in a Hybrid World. Uh, Elisa, uh, I think you're about to say something else, but can I just ask you briefly, one of the challenges I've been hearing lately is how much time in the office, how much time out of the office. Every office has a different view on this now. Some are one day a week or two days or whatever. Of course, people want to stay home, work from home. It's easier. Uh, is there any best practice emerging on the timing around how much in the office, how much out of the office? Let me deep dive into Singapore, actually, because we're here. And so what does this picture look like? Because it's actually starting to look very different in different uh, countries across the region. Hmm. Uh, so in uh, a few of the countries like the Philippines and China and India, we see one in five expecting people to come back to the office 100% of the time. That is much higher than Singapore. So the good oh. news is Singapore came out on top as one of the strongest champions of work flexibility agenda, at least for Asia. And when we're asking what is the preferred model or makeup, looking into the future uh, three to five years, the, uh, what we see here is that uh, only 1% are saying fully on site. Very, very low. Mm. And 31% are saying flex, full flexibility, work anywhere, anytime. But the hybrid office first is actually making up the biggest proportion. And so that's yeah. what you're describing, uh, Glenn. It is either two, three, or four. It depends on the industry. Speaking with a couple uh, banking regional CEOs this week, they are all uh, either fully back or they're on a three-day uh, back in the office. All right. Uh, we uh, hold that thought. We have, we've got a pause for our SEDF announcement, uh, just, and we'll come back and chat with you a bit more about that in just a second. Thanks, Lisa. The Singapore Civil Defense Force and Singapore Police Force Joint Open Mobilization Exercise is now in progress. Two SCDF units and two SPF units with the following code words have been activated. Sunfield, Bold Blossoms, Defender, Black Ninja. On being alerted to the mobilization message, all personnel from the activated units must report to their mobilization base immediately at once with their personal equipment. NS men who wish to inquire more about the exercise should contact their respective division headquarters for additional information. And we are back with our guest, Elisa Malis, MD, Vice President, APAC for Center for Creative Leadership, talking about Work 3.0. Uh, please carry on. Elisa, I believe you were talking about the hybrid in-office versus out-of-office. It seems Singapore might be a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more flexible than some other countries in the region. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So really uh, coming out ahead in terms of you know, Asia, uh, looking across Asia, leaders more willing to have people work from home some of the time. And I think that, you know, it's really about uh, figuring out how teams are going to be more effective in, in this environment. What we saw is that 36% uh, of leaders feel direction is harder to accomplish in, mm. in this environment. 44% feel alignment is harder to accomplish. And 39% feel commitment is harder to accomplish. Uh, that's what we call DAC in, in uh, CCL. That DAC is something that uh, leaders are really having to figure out new ways now to bring that type of uh, cohesion uh, in teams for the future. It's very interesting yes. because you mentioned those percentages there. I speak to a couple of bosses and they can't wait to have their staff back in the office. And uh, playing devil's advocate, a boss might say, why? Why do I need a hybrid model? If we're post-pandemic, why can't I just have my staff, if they're you know, based in the same country? Why couldn't I just have them all at the meeting around the table physically? Why do, they, do, why do I need that hybrid model? And when we look at the social cohesion, when we look at the teaming, and when we look at the social well-being, there is a strong case to say people can benefit from being in the office more. Mm. That can include flexibility. Right. And so I think that, you know, when we look at um, uh, Singapore, in fact, not many are saying you have to be back 100% of the time. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, certainly uh, there are many benefits uh, to the hybrid model that leaders are trying to take advantage of. And uh, the good thing is uh, it's wonderful to see here that uh, we have uh, the country a little bit further ahead in looking at the 
combinations, the creative ways. I think, you know, what we need to get out of is thinking that it's sort of all or nothing. Yeah. Um, and there is less of that as we're, as we're well, moving you, forward. You know, you mentioned the creative ways. So, so in, a, in a practical matter, what, what are some of the creative ways that, that we can merge this successfully, uh, the, the new hybrid uh, scenario? Because I am hearing from some executives, frankly, they're wanting employees in the office yeah, more. Same. They're, they're not wanting two or three days out of the office. They're wanting like maybe one day out of the office. So when, when you, was there anything that you guys found particularly interesting in terms of a strategy to make this work a little bit better, make it work easier to meet the boss's needs, to meet the coworkers' needs? Yeah, and certainly having people in the office more still can include many aspects of flexibility. Again, we have to think of it as a continuum now. Mm. Um, and so collaboration and teaming is one of the areas where we're seeing many different things that organizations are trying, um, you know, to kind of rebuild that cohesive glue. So organizations mm. are reestablishing core purpose. They are, uh, you know, developing collective mindsets. Uh, they are trying to rejuvenate the connection between teams. So you see many, um, I would say, revived and new type of initiatives of having a collaboration day, a day where everyone does come in, having various activities and not excluding the people that are not on site, encouraging people to be in more and being more adaptable in how you're going to be able to bring everyone together. Uh, so that certainly, I think, requires a different level of agility and adaptability mm. from senior leaders. Those who are what you're describing really in a fixed mindset that mm. I must have everyone come in the office all the time, I think are going to be in a less favorable position as we move into it. It's still very much an employer's market. Uh, yeah. The um, uh, um, our Overall, I think we see unemployment at its lowest rate in over 15 years, I think it's 2.2% at the moment. Right. So, you know, certainly taking a very fixed position is going to be challenging. At the same time, I do think it's possible to get people back in the office more yeah. in a way that also accommodates needs around well-being, around engagement, and productivity. That's mm. what we're trying to do. Fascinating. Nice. Well, let's nice. stay with that fixed position. To counter that, what would you say were some of the, the myths or misconceptions behind this hybrid working style? Uh, that, you know, there is a silver bullet to, to solve the uh, hybrid solution. Mm. So I think that uh, also that we're going to solve it with technology fixes. So 7 out of 10 in the study said that people and culture are really what is going to create success. Top success factors, sense of belonging, mm. uh, tox uh, accountability. Uh, these are some of the things that we see. So certainly... We need to use the technology in this new uh, hybrid uh, environment, but the fixing everything with the technology is a myth. Uh, the majority of what we need to do is reframe, you know, re um, look at things in a very different way. And I think also acknowledge uh, that for senior leaders, my experience right now is that this is becoming even more uh, challenging as we're really shuffling uh, in, in every single day between face-to-face -face and hybrid, I see that increasing. And as that happens, I think the myth uh, that we are just going to, you know, successfully slide into this 3.0 world uh, needs to be shattered. I know later on you have someone talking, coming in to talk about reflecting. Yeah. Uh, I think that the even compared to the 2.0 world where we were fully vir virtual, the demands uh, on leaders are uh, increasing even more. Um, at Center for Creative Leadership, we're just reaching our 20 years in Singapore and Asia this year. And also with that, we are bringing back our leadership at the peak, one of our signature uh, C-suite programs. We're seeing that more room, I think you'll be talking about this later in the show too, is needed for reflection, for really, especially as we shuffle between this face-to-face -face and virtual world, stepping back to reevaluate. Half of the organizations in the study do not have a vision for the 3.0 world mm. at the moment. Mm. It's hard, you know, in, in our VUCA world, right? There's lots of volatility. And, and I, would, I would venture a guess that even over the next year, if you were to do this study again, uh, the answers would be again evolving in, in a different way. Do you expect, in a, in a word or two, do you expect big changes in the year 2023 
further changing the mindset on Work 3.0? You know, we're trying to look ahead even further than that, and it absolutely is continuously evolving. Uh, so yes, we're always expecting ongoing changes. I think the uh, the key is, the good thing to see is that, why well, I talked about well-being, actually physical, emotional well-being are faring quite well, better. It is the social well-being that's still taking a big hit. Hmm. So in 2023, I think we're going to see, I hope we're going to see more approaches to addressing that social well-being because it is the cohesion for teams. Yeah. It is what drives organizations forward. And we're social beings in the end. It also helps us thrive and be healthy and happy. Just last, uh, last but not least, if there's an executive listening to this right now and they are struggling with this, trying to figure out what this mix is, what can CCL Creative, uh, the Center for Creative Leadership, help them do? What, what are the resources look like? How do they find the resources from you, for example, to help? navigate this? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We'll come to our website. The reports are available. The Singapore specific report will be available. We run a number of open enrollment programs in our center at the concourse and leaders at different levels can attend those. Leadership at the Peak is coming back at the end of October, which is our C-suite program. It is a transformational experience, uh, world-renowned, and we would uh, love to welcome leaders at that level there. And uh, nice. certainly all of our uh, papers and a lot of great shorter pieces on advice around this. I had one in Forbes Coaches Council recently on four ways that you can get your team to be effective in a hybrid environment. So awesome. come to ccl.org and you can find all of that. Thank you. Elisa Malice, Center for Creative Leadership. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Glenn.